I am standing in front of Farmtel on Main Street in Wayland, Iowa, and Farmtel is now KCTC, and I head up to Kelowna on this episode and visit with Casey Peck. She is the General Manager and Chief Financial Officer of KCTC, but first I want to mention our sponsors, Car Doctor of Washington, Iowa. No matter who Frankensteined it, they can fix and clean and customize it. Griner Auto Body of Washington, Iowa, using state-of-the-art techniques and decades of experience to get your car back on the road after an accident. McDonald Boneyard of Kyoto, Iowa, for all of your farm equipment and auto recycling needs. Hinshaw Trailer Sales of Richland, Iowa. You need a trailer, they've got your trailer and they fix what they sell and don't in their full-time repair shop. Girling Repair of Winfield, Iowa. If your mower is dead, call Fred, your Husqvarna, Aaron's, and Gravely dealer, and he also fixes snowblower, folks. B&B Propane and the family of Jet Stops present Southeast Iowa Today. I'm John Bain, author of Christie's Journey, The Beat Goes On, and your host. Let's head right up to Kelowna. Casey, welcome to Southeast Iowa Today. Thank you. Thank you for letting me visit you here at your office in Kelowna. And um, congratulations are in order. <laughs> Thank you. And that's for uh, KCTC being part of the Wayland, Iowa community now. And I I'm part of the Wayland, Iowa community. <laughs> yeah. And I know a lot of my uh, viewers are and the audience are. So I've got questions and hopefully I've got uh, questions that the folks that are watching this have as well. And maybe you can provide us the answers. So uh, first question I have is, is this a merger, a takeover, an acquisition? And what's the difference? Yeah. So um, this was actually, we are, we have acquired the shares of farm sales, so of and acquired the assets. Um, so the, um, we consider it an acquisition. You can call it merger, you can call it whatever. Okay. Um, but we have now owned the assets of uh, what used to be Farmtel Communications and our Farmers and Merchants Communications. And um, so their shareholders all should be getting a check if not already received a check. And um, so that we bought out all the shares of that organization so they no longer will exist. Um, I mean, there's legal stuff, of course, behind the scenes, sure. but in essence, that is, um, they will no longer exist as an entity gotcha. and they'll all exist as a subsidiary of KCTC actually called Communications Network. Um, there's some names and letters and stuff that have gone out. Um, Communications Network Incorporated actually owns the assets of um, farmers and merchants now, um, okay. but that is a wholly, wholly owned subsidiary of KCTC. So a little right. technical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. well that definitely uh, answers that question. Now, will we see uh, folks that go to Wayland, will we see new signage on the building as far as KCTC is concerned? Yeah, yeah, so we're work, that's a work in progress, of okay. course, as you know how that goes. Sure. So, um, yep, we'll get new signage. Um, you already maybe have seen the trucks, oh, most of the trucks have been swatch, swapped out to KCTC logos. I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep, so that is kind of in the work in the progress. Um, and we'll I saw some guys out on Wayland Road working oh, on some lines yeah. that looked like the other day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah, yeah. hooking up a new customer. So yeah, so yeah, we'll continue to um, swap out signage, swap out all the things um, to be labeled as KCTC. Um, and but the great thing is um, the staff all stayed, so we had 100% retention of staff. And so it'll That's be the great. same faces. It'll just be um, additional faces okay. to the to what you'll see. Um, some of the KCTC staff will be down there regularly or. Um, I'll be down there once a, at least once a week and you know others will be down there okay. on a regular basis so it's great we can swap between the two if one side is busier than the other side we can just um, see how it goes and um, send staff where we need to so yeah that is wonderful now with uh, KCTC's involvement will customers see any differences in um, the product yeah so um, KCTC being a larger organization than what Farmtel had been previously, um, we did have we do have services that they, you know, many of the customers of Farmtel have not been accustomed to, um, and so we will be announcing those and letting people know that those are available. Um, we also have standardized speeds going forward, um, so we'll all have 
have it across the board for all customers. Um, that'll be a work in progress. Um, okay. Some of it will have to be, you know, upgraded their equipment and that type of thing to, so they can get a little bit faster speed. Um, but yeah, we want to go to like the same speeds, the same pricing, all that kind of stuff so that we can act as one and, you gotcha. know, all those things. So it'll be a, uh, a progression over a period of time, obviously. So um, the one thing that will be coming up for existing FarmTel customers is that we are going through a billing conversion. So after the first of the year that your bill may be, look a little bit different, but it should be the same, okay. um, but may just look a little bit different. In now, future, is the so. price going to be the same? Yeah. Or? So okay. we our aim is to make price the same. There will be a, a little bit of a change maybe okay. both ways. Some may see a little bit less than their bill. Some may see a little You'll bit more. You'll never hear anybody complain about that. Unless. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But our goal is to try to make it, you know, the same or close to the same as possible. Okay. Um, but we also want to make sure that the speeds are there because we recognize that um, as the world evolves, that that demand for more and more bandwidth is what customers really want and what they really need to survive. And um, whether it be play, work, you know, all the things, right. it's important to have that speed. So we want to offer that speed of um, availability. So, you know, and uh, and talk about evolving you know technology has in my lifetime i mean i know i'm getting to be an old guy but i'm not that old of a guy <laughs> no, but you're not old. i i do remember the 1900s <laughs> 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 but um technology I, when i was in your lobby today um just looking at the different products that you have available for yeah. consumers that they can come right in here and and purchase those things yeah, yeah. and then i was talking to the receptionist the lady out front and um she a package was delivered here and it wasn't from ups or fedex i don't know yeah. where the gentleman was from but he dropped off the package and then he had a little electronic gadget that she signed her name electronically uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, as i just was watching as an observer and thinking how natural of a process that now is yes and i mean there was a time where that was really weird what do you mean i have to sign on this gadget and what are you doing with my signature right yeah, you know exactly. and all that and then people would just scribble because they didn't want it to look anything like it and right i try to make it look like it's supposed to and it still doesn't right. <laughs> i do too and i often think that too like how impatient we've become like for yes. me like when i'm signing documents i'd rather e-sign than you know, manually sign it and then right. scan it in or whatever. So yeah, we all are, are <laughs> creatures of maybe being impatient yes. or more impatient than we once were or whatever, just to get those things. And I, I really do think that technology is the, the biggest life changing um, concept or when you compare it to like the industrial revolution yeah. and all that, I think te our technology revolution is just continually to evolve and it's it's just incredible and yeah. I, I mean you folks are right on the cutting edge of yeah. all this yeah yeah it's it is exciting I think it's super exciting um, one thing that I will tell you that like when COVID hit and people started working from home and all those things at KCTC we saw within the three month time frame um, you know March to June is what I'll say um, a 38% increase in our bandwidth usage just in Kelowna. I mean, we did have Washington too. So, you mm -hmm. know, just within our customer base. And so I, I think that that is probably just a continuous um, thing that we'll continue to see. And, yeah. you know, even in my home, I think, oh, you know, we're not that big of users, but you really look at all the devices that are attached to our internet at home and it's so grand and it's like, oh man, I never thought we were so... Um, attached to it right. either but definitely everybody is in one way shape or form i mean when you got refrigerators now and you got like mm -hmm. um, all the things crock pods <laughs> that are like oh, yeah. wi-fi enabled and, and uh, the lights yes and the thermostats yes, yes. i um we i had an issue a while back with my internet and yeah. someone from farmtel at the yeah. time okay. uh came and, and they got it straightened out for me and um I was talking about you know how much uh, bandwidth I have and how much capability yeah. and all that and and then he's like he's looking and he looks on his tablet and he could tell well you've got fourteen devices yeah hooked up yes I'm like what I know and he started naming them off and I'm like oh yeah I guess I do <laughs> and he goes but that's not a lot he goes I go into some places there's people that got thirty five and yeah. stuff and, you know it's just crazy oh it is insane. Yeah. I know. And we all have to have our friend Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
tell us where and yeah. what to do. And, and, um, and she seems to get smarter every day because yeah. I'll, I'll say, Alexa, what's the temperature outside? And she'll say, good morning, John. Yeah. I'm like, where is this coming from? <laughs> That's right. It's almost scary, isn't it? Yes, huh? it is. It really is. It really is. Well, you know, you talked about you you were um, you know in Kelowna and you worked your way into Washington and in a different life. I can remember where KCTC was just working street by street to develop Washington, Washington and yeah. getting a footprint. Yeah. And now you've got this huge footprint in Southeast yeah. Iowa. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah. So we're super fortunate. Um, we and that's kind of what drove us to kind of consider other options or other things is we. Um, had finished the Washington a year ago, actually, about this time. We finished all of Washington. Um, and how long did that take to start? Yeah, so a six-year time span. Six is, years. Yep, we started six years before that. And then, um, and even before that, when we were just in Kelowna, um, we had built everything out to fiber. And so our board is super progressive, is what I would say. And they're like, what's next, you know? And so um, Washington was actually a natural progression. Uh, we already had some fiber going down there. And so it really made it easier to connect to those customers. Um, not cheap, but easier, right, you know, right. um, because of proximity and all those things. So yeah, we were able to build that out. We have attained um, five grants now to build into different areas. Some we haven't built out yet. Um, we just were able to finish um, between Riverside, Washington, and Kelowna this year, uh, just in the last few weeks, actually. Wow. Um, so that grant is um, completed, and so we've completed two other grants already, and then we have two more to come. So we were just awarded another one recently um, that came out in NOFA 8. Now, do um, those come from the state or the federal Yeah, so level? good question. So the ones I'm speaking about have all been state-driven. Um, we did have in... Um, our next build will be going down to Crawfordsville area. We'll build that with all of fiber. That was a grant that we got in a, about a year ago, I think, or was it just the spring? I don't know. All blurs together, but anyhow, so um, that grant will be built out. Um, hope start. We'll hopefully start next year. Um, but the fortunate thing is that we actually got that a grant, and um, Wayland Arms Hill had also gotten a grant. So there'll be two builds going on at the same simultaneously. Wow. Um, but. We also did get a grant from the federal as well, so there's a um, so we'll be able to tap into both of those grant opportunities. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, and then we just recently were awarded another one. So um, and right now we're in the process of working on building out Ainsworth to fiber with fiber right now currently, um, and then the farm tell staff has been working on around the Pekin area, Pekin school area. Um, Pekin Packwood area, they wow. got a grant and they're finishing that um, right now. Our construction manager has been down there trying to help them. So just listening to all these places, I, you're talking miles and oh, miles yeah. of yeah. Um, in between yeah. of these towns. Yeah. And, and the fact that these grants were uh, granted, I mean, this is definitely um, what I would think a lot of taxpayers, dollars, the, a lot of taxpayers will be benefiting from these dollars spent yeah absolutely. and um it's going to bring probably every farmhouse that's yeah. out in the middle of many acres and acres of fields yeah into the 21st century yeah. of technology <laughs> right so one of my favorite stories is um when we had started this build between riverside and washington and Kelowna. um my son was in fifth grade at the time now a seventh grader so it was two years ago but um, he came home at, uh, it was close to Christmas time, and he said, Mom, are you building fiber to this house or whatever? And I was like, yeah, that's kind of random. Can you explain <laughs> more how you know this or what, what's, why do you ask that question? And he said, well, um, his friend, um, they don't even have to have Christmas. That's the best Christmas present ever because the mom can work from home, and she was almost, could have been in the potential to lose her, her job because she didn't have um, but, and so I was like, I'm like, yeah, so that's what it's that's, all about. You know, that almost like, makes me tear up I to hear know, that. That's incredible. Yeah. It's an incredible story. And I was like, oh, two little fifth graders talking about it, you know, like, yeah. and so obviously it's impactful for them. Yeah. And so that's what we're looking at is the, their future, you know, not necessarily, I mean, yes, for us, it is definitely what we want and, right. um, what we need, but to look to their future is it gives them the opportunity to come back to Washington County, let's hope, or Henry County, let's hope. And, and have a life and, and a job. A life, and, yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And work from home. So, yeah, so that those are the things that are touching and really are why why we're doing what we're doing. And, 
you know, it's not every company that's going out and trying to attain these grants, but um, we have a true belief that we want to help every customer in Johnson or in Washington and Henry County as much as we can. Uh-huh. I mean, there's other providers that um, are also working to do the same thing that are local providers, and um, we definitely support that as well as um, we all need to do it together. So. Well, that is that is awesome. I mean, that is. I think about it. I think I've got grandkids and I've got yeah. nieces and nephews, and a lot of times the older relatives will get on their case if they're using their tablets and yeah. that sort of thing. But what we need to remember is that stuff is the wave of the future, ladies yeah. and gents. And whether we understand it or like it or whatever, <laughs> they are understanding it. They're learning on it. And it's going to be a part of their their livelihoods. Right, right. And, well, and I think you it's all how you look at it, too. Yeah. Because I look at, like... I mean, we were talking about YouTube subscriptions and all that kind of thing before. And, you know, I often used to think, oh, you know, I don't want my kids to be on their devices because, you know, that causes problems. And, right. you know, that. but in the end, I'm like, my kids are watching YouTube videos to make them more successful in the career they're choosing to pursue potentially right. or, you know, what they enjoy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, if they're learning it's not a bad thing in my mind. Right. And yeah, do you want it on there 24 7? No. No. But, and we but still the want them to, even YouTube will put a message up and say, go yeah. outside for 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But at the same time, you know, if if they're going to be on it or if they're going to be learning, we'd prefer it to be through um, an educational experience rather than, yeah, watching the trash. Yes, I know there's exactly. trash on, exactly. on, on all the medias, but um, but there are good things out there as well. So I think you take the good or the bad. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of podcasts out there um, like yours mm-hmm. and others in the communities that we serve and that are really successful and people will look to them and watch yeah. them to be learning from, right. you know. So I think that's, that's it's all how we perceive it to be and and even kctc can help um consumers customers uh set up parental guidelines or controls on devices and that sort of thing yeah as well absolutely yeah so yeah on our um command iq app and that type of thing there's parental controls and there's limitations and all the things so there's lots of exciting things that can happen and so that you can get control of it (laughs) as well so kick them off if you need to exactly go outside burn off some energy (laughs) you know i think about it and it's like we think about how sophisticated we are and up to speed we are Mm -hmm. on technology in 2023 but when you add 40 years to this people are going to look back and go Look at how they used to do that. <laughs> I know. Can you right. believe they did it that way? Right, but, right. But you have yeah. to do it that way to get there. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I do think that, you know, it's not only the kids, but you think a lot of the even older adults, um, like my parents, you know, maybe someday they can stay in their house longer because, right. you know, if you put video cameras in there and watch them or making sure you know hey re- set reminders for them to take their medicine or whatever yeah. i mean they're not to that point right. now so hopefully they're not watching this but i'm not <laughs> suggesting that they're to that point but right. but at the at the same time you know it does allow opportunities um not only young and older to help support each other and um in a way that they can stay grounded as long as they want to you know right. or can or right. able to so yeah well i am very blessed in my own personal life i have some relatives that are what I would call seasoned now, <laughs> and they yeah. don't always embrace technology or understand it or want to learn it. Yeah. And I tell my kids, I say, now listen, when I start acting like that, <laughs> you need to s- remind me that I told you, don't let me act like that. Yes. And then, and then they go, hey, Dad, I gotta tell you something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, KCTC is a wonderful business that allows people to to watch things like they're watching right now, <laughs> right. you know? So thank you for that. I want to just ask one more question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so now that uh, you're in Wayland, yeah. what are the other communities that that KCTC footprint now extends to because yeah. of that? So... Uh, to be honest with you, I probably can't even list them all, John. Okay. Um, Farm Tell had a, had done a tremendous job of um, extending their network out. Um, they also have wireless, their wireless um, internet as well. And so there's lots of opportunities out there. Um, I mean, I think our goal is just to keep that the same. Um, but like I said, 
currently they're building in the Pekin area, Pekin Packwood area, um, to try to get those customers fiber. Um, but you know, Richland, um, Brighton, he Brighton, yeah. Hedrick, um, I mean, probably like Pleasant along, Plains. Too. Yeah, right. Yeah. All along that 78 corridor okay. is what I'll say. The 78 corridor. Um, I don't know my town's down there very yeah. good, so you're putting well, me on the spot there. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> yeah. gonna know them. I know. I, know. <laughs> I will get to know them in a in a um, in a hurry here. Yeah. But um, yeah, so they serve a lot of customers, or they serve a lot of area already, and so yeah, yeah. we're just excited to embrace that and. Um, yeah, so you look and we go as far north as basically Johnson Washington Road a little bit north of that but and then clear down into Henry County so it's a wide yeah. span of customers that we serve. Yeah, it is a lot of miles, yeah, lot of miles definitely. Well, I was going to ask one other question and it was going to be why did you um, seek the uh, Farmtel acquisition but I think you pretty much answered it when you yeah. were answering the other question well, about and what I they've think, done. Yeah, I think one thing I didn't say in this whole thing is um, for me personally, individually, um, it's about how we can help the people, whether it be customers or staff. Um, I think the combination is really gives um, opportunities for our staff to be better trained, to, to do, have new opportunities that they didn't have before um, because you have a bigger staff count as well. Um, so it just open up, opens up opportunities. So for me, that's what it's about. It's about opportunities for staff and for customers. Um, and just the people. Um, it's all about the people in the end, right? You know. Well, I'll tell you what. It, it, I mean, that once you figure that out, it just makes everything go a lot smoother for everyone. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Definitely. Well, Casey Peck, thank you so much for being a part of Southeast Iowa today. Yeah. Happy. Thanks for. Thank you, John. Too. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You too. <laughs> Thank you, Casey, for that wonderful conversation and congratulations to KCTC and the folks in Wayland and surrounding areas. It sounds like it's going to be a great acquisition and a great change for Southeast Iowa. And on that note, I also want to thank our sponsors, Griner Auto Body, Car Doctor, Girling Repair, B&B Propane and the Family of Jet Stops, McDonald Boneyard, and Hinshaw Trailer Sales. I'm your host, John Dane. Stay friendly, Southeast Iowa.